two, one, let's go. Hello everyone, welcome to an ambitious video where I rank and review the entire R-Type series. I've done nothing in my free time for the past two weeks except sit and play R-Type in preparation for this video. And even though I didn't one CC each and every game, I spent a good amount of time with each title. I practiced them, I did save states, I did stage select, I did whatever I needed to do to get a strong feel for how the game worked and what makes each game different from one another and of course how they stack up quality wise. But before we talk about the games individually, I actually want to discuss our type as a franchise, as a unit, because in the process of going through and doing this ranking, I actually came across some running themes and ideas that I think will be interesting to set up first. That way we all know what I am talking about when I'm discussing the games individually. And so the first thing to discuss is our types popularity within the shmup pantheon because a few years ago I was under the misunderstanding that R-Type was not actually all that popular of an old school shmup franchise, especially in comparison to the giants like Gradius and Darius. And in my defense, in all those years of doing podcasts and YouTube videos and talking to other players, R-Type would come up every now and then, but for most events and for most things, it was definitely all about Gradius or Darius. Just look at the Shmup Slam entries, for example. Almost every single Shmup Slam has a Darius of some kind in it. And then I think a few of them have Gradius, and there was a lot of Japanese events with Gradius games going on. And so those two series were always in the mix when we're talking about old school Shmup. But R-Type wouldn't really come up all that often. And then I did a certain review a few years ago, and we'll talk about that here shortly. And boy oh boy did I find out that R-Type has a very passionate and vocal fan base and in this journey of going through all these R-Type games I think I understand where this blind spot of mine occurred and that's because in my opinion R-Type even though it begins life as an arcade game like Gradius and Darius I think it actually developed much more into a console style shoot 'em up series something like Thunder Force than it did the Gradius series and so I think this is where the split in the fan base occurs where a lot of console shmup players really like R-Type and it's much more in their library, it's much more in their wheelhouse, and then maybe arcade players might tend to drift towards Darius or Gradius. This is my theory, you can weigh in on the comments section, but I do have a good amount of experience at this point, I think it holds up. So that's my first observation, is that I think the fan base for R-Type is very strong with the console players. My second observation was that when I was going through and reviewing the literature for the series, basically all of the written words around the R-Type games over the years, articles, reviews, blog posts, forum posts, all that sort of stuff, I noticed an interesting comparison to the Legend of Zelda series actually. And I make this comparison because whenever you have informal discussions about the Legend of Zelda games, or an R-Type in this case, so on forums or on Discord servers, you'll see a large variety of opinions and people have all these different takes of, oh, this is the best game in the series or that's the best game in the series or I think this mechanic works here or doesn't work there, all that sort of stuff. But when you get down to the professional reviews or the formal reviews, the Metacritic qualified reviews, whatever you want to call them, you get a real uniformity of opinion in this sort of basic take that just arches across all of the reviews. They all feel the same way about these games. There's sort of this general narrative around this R-Type has this problem, this R-Type has that problem, and there's not a lot of dissenting opinion. And I always wonder how exactly that occurs, and I'm gonna need to do a video on this at some point because I came across this with Ikaruga, I'm coming across this with R-Type. Is this just hive mind? Is this straight up plagiarism? What is it? But that's kind of the same thing with The Legend of Zelda, where reviewers are very cautious, very careful. They don't want to leave too many harsh words about Legend of Zelda, otherwise you're going to get your head guillotined off. And I think our types pretty similar as well, and I think that explains some of the more recent reviews of the series. But just to warn you, even though I am a big fan of the series, I had a lot of fun playing it, and I think it has a lot of strong qualities. This isn't just going to be a unanimous praise fest where I think R-Type's the greatest thing ever because I do have some critiques that I want to share and we'll talk about that very shortly. My third observation is the way the difficulty curve works across the series. 
This is something that is very interesting and not really discussed all that often unless you're discussing series as a whole, which normally when it comes to shmup series, the difficulty curve is upward across the titles. So Don Pachi is easier than Dodon Pachi. Dodon Pachi is relatively easier than DOJ, especially white label. And then after white label, things start to shift a little bit. But SDOJ expert is insane. And so these types of things, the way it works is there's sort of an arms race between the arcade operators and the arcade players. And so for most arcade shmup series, you'll see in each increment, in each title, they just keep getting harder and harder and harder. Our type is not like this. Actually, our type reminds me much more of a console series like Super Mario Bros, where it has a consistent, slightly increasing, slightly decreasing, but it's kind of like this mostly linear difficulty curve. And the reason for that is because the idea is to keep it consistent across the platforms and it's on a console. You don't need to try and steal the player's money. You're not competing with the guy from 1980 in 2000, right? You're not worrying about that as much. And so that is another sort of source of evidence, in my opinion, that our type would appeal to console players because it doesn't have that climbing difficulty curve across the game. My fourth observation is how uniform the game design is across the series. Our type is not a franchise that shakes things up. There's not a massive amount of variation from one game to another. You're not like chaining in Dodonpachi and then bullet canceling in DFK. And you don't have players who love Dodonpachi and dislike DFK or the other way around. But in our type, I can't really envision a player liking our type one, then playing our type three and saying, no, screw this bullshit. What, what charge shots? This is an outrage, you know? Because the game design is so iterative and so traditional to its own style, I think it brings up some pros and it brings up some cons. But an issue about this that I brought up in the artistic laundering video is laundering of mistakes through sequelization. So basically what I'm saying is if there is a design element that I don't think really works all that well in R-Type 1 or R-Type 2, and there's a particular thing I'm going to talk about here, because the series just carries it throughout and just continues to do it over and over, it gets you in this ugly situation as a reviewer where now you're reviewing our type final two and you say, well, I don't know if this checkpoint system is a good idea. This checkpoint system seems archaic and outdated and it, it feels like it's slowing down the pace of the gameplay. Well, you make that criticism and what people can say is, well, it's a tradition of our type. You know, it's how our type is checkpoints, you know, and so there's no real room for critiquing elements that probably should have evolved along with other games in the genre. And I'm going to talk specifically about the checkpoints here, and then we'll talk about the games individually. So I want to do a little spiel on the checkpoint system, because I am a big critic of checkpoints in shmup, especially in shmups that are coming out today. I can forgive it in the earlier titles because they were still sort of figuring out all this stuff. The arcade environment was a factor, but as the series goes on and as other franchises start to develop and drop this checkpoint idea, I don't think it should have continued onward. Now I want to give my particular criticisms of checkpoints now, so either you agree or you don't agree, but at least you know where I'm coming from. So the reason why I think checkpoints are a bad idea in shmup is they really break the flow of the genre, especially a game like R-Type, which struggles to have a flow to begin with because the game crawls along and is definitely a more methodical slow pace. I know that's what people like. I know the game is designed around that. That can work. But when you add in a checkpoint system on top of that, it can get downright painful. And in fact, the way I decided to start playing our type is I don't even bother with checkpoints. So if I'm going through and I die, I just restart the game or I restart a save state practice and then restart the game. And I think that's kind of the way most players have started to play these old school shmups over the years where they either need to learn all the checkpoints, learn all the checkpoint recoveries, or they just restart on death. Gradius syndrome, as it's called. But I do think it is a little bit concerning as the franchise goes on, this is never addressed. The checkpoint system is just left in place as sort of like a, 
hey, it's an R-Type 1, so it's going to be in every single R-Type. Whereas Gradius, for example, Treasure did Gradius 5, the last Gradius game. Treasure said, all right, enough of this checkpoint bullshit. Let's actually make it so you recover and make this sort of fit within the framework. And if you really want it, you can go to the options menu and turn on checkpoints. I think that was the winning solution. I think that's the correct solution. And so I'm going to be critical of the games later in the series as they don't move past this checkpoint system because I think it really slows down the pace of the game. I think it limits the way the game can actually be designed because the game needs to be balanced around recovering off these checkpoints. You need to always keep the level design somewhat underpowered. You're never fully able to unleash what the ship could possibly do within the level design because let's say you do an insane area full of bullets and enemies and it's just impossible for a non-powered ship to get through well either that's shitty design because now you're just in a death loop or it's poor design because you have to hold back what the game can offer the player whereas if you design the game around a ship that's either fully powered up all the time or able to recover fairly well then you can get, I think, much more interesting level design. You can get much more interesting boss fights. Things just become much stronger, in my opinion. So I know people defend checkpoints because they are tradition, but I don't think they are great. And I think it is unfortunate that the series continues to use them even to this day. And with all that laid out, let's get into the first ranking of the R-Type series, which is R-Type 3 on the GBA. All right, got you there. So this I'm not going to talk too much about because I'm going to make a whole separate video about it. But R-Type 3 came out on the GBA and it sucks because the port is just straight up broken. <laughs> it's just a busted ass port. And so I'm going to make a special video about this, but just a fun little uh, opener for you all. That's the worst in the R-Type series. But really, OK, then after that, we have R-Type Final 2. Is this any surprise? I put this low on the list. And when I look back on my review of the game a few years ago, I am actually impressed with how much I agree with it even now, especially having played the entire franchise. So now people can't come in and say, oh, you don't understand R-Type. It's actually an amazing game. No, I do not like R-Type Final 2 for basically the same reasons that I said before. One, I think the level design is horrendous. The graphics look cheap. I know they're upscaled and high res, but to me, they look like something you buy off Unity. They look like StarCraft II from 2010. Something about these graphics I cannot stand. They don't have any sort of character or finesse. They look store-bought, they look pre-made, and they don't jive together at all. You can tell on that first stage, the devs went hard in the paint doing all these things with the backgrounds and trying to make it look really great for trailers. But as you go through the game, the backgrounds and levels get more and more basic. And the second stage, that boss fight, that enemy ship, it looks like you're fighting Lego blocks or the graphics. I cannot stand them, not only just visually, but also the way they play gameplay wise. The bullets are usually like these hazy, indistinct shapes. Where's the hitbox on these things? No one knows, really. Same thing with a lot of the obstacles and things just blend into the background, pop into the background. There's a lot of issues with the way they do the layering. Like there'll be a part where you're flying through in the second stage and all these ships just fly over top of you, but they're not properly spaced uh, in the three dimensions to look like they're on a different plane. And then they have something fly in from the background and you can't really tell when it enters the game field. There's just a ton of issues like that with the visual design and then the level design is weirdly inconsistent. You'll be going through sections that go from empty nothingness, okay, let's get this over with, to then you get these massive spike of enemies in five seconds, and then back to nothingness, and then you'll get things just kind of pop out of nowhere. You'll be flying, all of a sudden a laser just appears. Uh, that happens a ton. Things will spawn and just fire, Raiden style, as they're coming in. The difference is, in Raiden, your ship is a thousand miles per hour. You can move around things. In our type, your ship isn't so fast. It isn't so nimble. I'm not a fan of it. And I know the defense. I know the defense people have for this, which is quantity. 
because in my opinion, the quality is horrible. I didn't even mention the boss fights. I talked about that in my review. And the thing about it, especially comparing it to other boss fights in the series, there's no denying our type is not exactly a boss fight bonanza in terms of its boss designs. They're usually pretty basic. The thing about it though, is I actually would prefer our type two style boss fights where you can just one shot a bunch of the bosses over our type final two bosses where you can't one shot them. That would have been nice actually. Instead, you have these really tedious, drawn out, boring fight. And I show one here where you can just time out the boss and there's real no incentive not to do that, but you can just sit up there and shoot it and just wait for it to time out. I mean, they did try. I can give them that. They definitely did try to capture the R-Type formula. And there are some sections of the game that are kind of fun that where it kind of works. But for the most part, I just don't think it's polished. I don't think it's well done. You know what's funny is when I re did my review a few years ago, I mean, the backlash was um, insane. And the funny thing now is you look back and a lot of reviewers have, you know, changed their tune a little bit. The game isn't so uniformly praised anymore. If you go on Metacritic, if you look at the other reviews, the level design is just not there. And the thing about it that I didn't bring up in my initial review that I'm going to bring up now, now that I have a full context of the series, is that even if you want to defend R-Type Final 2 and say, well, it tries, it's not horrible. I wouldn't say it's a horrible game, but it's just painfully mediocre. But the thing about it is it does nothing of interest. It does nothing new. It doesn't it doesn't bring something to the table that hasn't been done way better in all the other R-Type games. So I don't see the appeal. I cannot find the appeal of this game. I think it looks ugly. I think the soundtrack's boring and stupid. I hate the level design. I hate the boss fights. Can hardly enjoy any aspect of this game. So uh, I know this is going to fire up a lot of people already, but this is my most negative take. I actually like a lot. I like all the other games in this series, basically, outside of R-Type Final 2. I just do not like this game. I think it's a little bit criminal how it didn't really get criticized all that much when it came out. I think hopefully if they do an R-Type Final 3, some lessons have been learned, some budgets have been taken care of, staff have been trained, and we get a much better game in R-Type Final 3. I wouldn't count it out because it's possible we can get a good one, but this one was just no go. And then people did ask, am I going to buy the DLC and review the DLC? I had to reinstall this game on my Switch just to come back. I'm not going to comment on the performance issues on the Switch because I understand they're not on the other platform. But no, a game that I find painfully mediocre, I don't feel necessary to buy the DLC. And this is a whole other topic I'll discuss in a video very soon when it comes to do you have to buy the DLC to review the game? No, obviously not. If they're not giving you a solid base experience, that's a whole separate issue. But no, I'm not going to play through the entire game and unlock all these ships and unlock the DLC. I don't like busy work. I don't think shmups are the genre of busy work. I don't think that's a, an appealing aspect to shmup players. Oh, the game isn't fun. It's kind of mediocre and boring, but you can play it for hours and hours and hours. That's not a... That's like an RPG thing. I don't think that's a shmup thing. So R-Type Final 2, in case it's not clear, I do not like this game. But that being said, now we're going to start moving upward into much more positive notes with R-Type Final 1. That's my next one on the list. I don't think that's a big surprise, is it? Here's the funny thing about R-Type Final 1. R-Type Final 1 has issues. It is not a great R-Type game in comparison to the others. But at the same time, I think it is significantly better than R-Type Final 2 for a number of reasons. The first is that it is actually more fun to play level design wise. It's got a lot more going on. It keeps you interested. It keeps you motivated. It's actually much more creative too. It throws wild shit at you. You're like, what the hell is going on? But it's fun. It's not obnoxious and annoying like R-Type Final 2 where it's throwing things at you that aren't surprising or interesting. It's just, you know, oh, this beam appeared out of nowhere and hits you remember the beam that's how our type final 2 does level design our type final 1 there's like things spawning and jumping out there's tentacles appearing out of nowhere the boss fights are surprisingly interesting and difficult i actually had a lot of fun playing our type final 1 so i think it is a massive improvement over our type final 2 it's janky though that's why it's this low on the list um the graphics aren't great i'm not going to say that 
The thing about the graphics that I think are better than our type final two though, is that yeah, it's on the PS2, it's not as high resolution or whatever, but the graphics at least fit together. They at least make sense with one another. It doesn't look like the background and the foreground and the enemies are from three different art departments. It's cohesive in the graphical design at least, has some cool effects. They were going for it, they were trying. I don't think it is anywhere near as good as something like Gradius 5 on the PS2, but I can respect it. I can respect the effort. I can respect it's kind of going for like an RPG ish, Thunder 4 ish type of feel. I can see what it's going for. I don't think it quite delivers, but it is fun and it is interesting. And I think it graphically just looks better. You can see the bullets better. It works a lot better than our type final two. So it's not amazing, but I do think it is a massive improvement over our type final one. And if you have a PS2, but I, I think it's worth a play. So I thought it was actually pretty fun. And then after that, this is where things start to get interesting because I thought those were the two most obvious picks, right? I thought those were pretty obvious. But now we get into the meat of, okay, where do we go from here? My next on the list is our type one, the OG, the original. Now, the thing about this is it's very tricky to rank our type one for two reasons. The first reason why it's tricky is because it is an insanely polished first entry into any series. Darius one compared to our type one, there's no competition. Darius one is a joke compared to our type one. It is insane how much of the series is already contained in our type one. I think it is the most significant of all of the series by far. It just shows up with all these mechanics out of nowhere. It's got the side beams. It's got the force ball that you play with. You can already do all those crazy strategies with the force ball, like having it fly around and you go underneath it and you control it. And if you fly underneath it, it'll fly backwards and you can get on the back side or the front side. You can charge your beam. You have speed up. You can fire your ball into bosses. And that's how you fi kill the final boss, by the way. The amount of shit they come up with in R type one is impressive. This is a landmark title. It is big. The downfall of our type one though, and why it's kind of hard to rank is because all of its ideas are improved upon later on in the series. Everything it does well, the other games do better later on for the most part. So it's a great game. It's brilliant. If I was making him greatest shmups of all time list, which I did, I, I must have put our type one, right? I didn't put the other R types in there because it's it's more significant than them, but as far as ranking them gameplay wise, that's its sort of downfalls because all the other R types copy it and improve upon it. And so it's a brilliant first entry into this series and the blueprint, a very solid blueprint for what you'll see later on. But some of the level design and boss design, I think, is a little archaic and silly, especially that green stage with the platforms and stuff. That's there's some real gotcha type moments in there overall. It's very impressive how much our type one holds up all these years later. And then my next entry onto the list and hold on before you start typing, hear me out. Super R type with a caveat with an asterisk next to it. So if I was just ranking the cartridge that you buy and you stick in your Super Nintendo, I don't know where I'd put the damn thing. Maybe on the lowest on the list, maybe above the GBA port of R type three, somewhere in there. Because performance wise, this thing is a pile of garbage. If you stick the cartridge in your SNES and play it, it's a waste of time. It's a slow paced game with slow down. It's a nightmare. For that reason, Super R-Type definitely deserves the negative reviews it's had over the years. However, the year is 2022. We have the technology. We can revive this game. And so if you run this bad boy, I think the Mister has the feature. If you run it in emulator, you probably could throw it in the Super NT and might have this feature. You can turn on overclocking and get rid of the slowdown. That is now possible, which I did, which you see in the footage here. Once you get rid of that slowdown, Super R-Type is actually a hell of a fun game. And I really enjoyed it. I think of all the R-Types you've gone through, I think the first one I will do a 1cc for is Super R-Type with the slowdown disabled. It's just downright fun. It's like a more breezy, easy to get into R-Type 2. And it has some exclusive sections. It has some its own boss fights. It's also got a really cool SNES soundtrack. I love the way it looks on the SNES. The graphics are really well done. Really, it's Achilles heel. It's just that stupid slowdown. But 
if you get rid of it, the game is actually a lot of fun. And I was going through and I was reading a lot of reviews of the game. And one of the reviews I came across was saying, even if you got rid of the slowdown, hypothetically, I guess the guy didn't realize you actually can, the game would suck. And he felt that way because it's like an inferior version of R-Type 2, which I don't agree with. I think of it's like a, almost like an arrange. It's like a 16-bit arrange of R-Type 2 because it is fun. And a lot of the boss fights are interesting and a nice change of pace. Then there's the big complaint about the checkpoint system. And this is where things get interesting and where I'm going to deviate from a lot of other reviewers. A lot of other reviewers will blame Super R-Type for having this weird checkpoint system where it sets you back an entire level rather than having you checkpoint onto whatever random spot on the level you checkpoint to, right? In my opinion, I actually think checkpointing back to the start of the level might be the better option. Might as well, right? If you're going to checkpoint people back and you're going for a serious run, it's probably better if you're going into the last stage to checkpoint back to the start of the last stage rather than to checkpoint back to the boss or like right, right before the boss then you go into the final boss with no power and you know that's absolute hell i think in the long run checkpointing backwards all the way backwards if you're going for one cc runs is probably the kinder option to you and secondly i don't necessarily care that much what these games do with their checkpoint systems because I already consider this a flaw of the series. I do not like the checkpoint systems wherever you stick them. I think they're all pretty messed up. And so is this a big deal to me? No, because I will just restart the play anyway. It doesn't affect me. I don't play with the checkpoints. I try to go around them. I either save state to practice and then just no miss one CC the game. And if you have to checkpoint back to the start of the state, I don't think that's that big of a deal. It's annoying if you're playing it on console and you're trying to practice. I think that's what they're getting at. You want to practice, but we have save states now. So that idea, why even bother with that when you can uh, practice with the save state? So those two big criticisms, thanks to the magic of save states and the magic of overclocking, I think really revived this game. And if you haven't played it with these features, it's definitely worth a second look. Playing it on the original hardware with the slowdown, no dice. But if we went by those criterias, I wouldn't play Metal Slug 2. But Metal Slug 2 is actually an amazing Metal Slug game once you remove the slowdown with overclocking. So I kind of feel the same way about Super R-Type. I think it's a bit underrated right now because people aren't taking those steps to get rid of the overclocking. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some bootleg cartridge in the future that has like a Super FX chip that removes the slowdown or something. They've been doing that, I think, with Gradius at some point. So... Yes, I actually really like Super R-Type. I thought it was a lot of fun. So that's why I placed it above the other two. And then after that, we have R-Type 3. This might be an interesting choice because I could see R-Type 3 being a fan favorite. And if I were to classify R-Type 3, I would say it is the most console of all of them, except maybe R-Type Final 1. It is clearly made to be a console game. And I don't just say that because it's literally a console shmup. So for those who don't know, R-Type 1 has an arcade release and then a bunch of console ports. R-Type 2, arcade release, a bunch of console ports, one of those being Super R-Type. R-Type 3, console exclusive to the Super Nintendo. And what's interesting is that whenever we discuss Super Nintendo shmups and people start thumbing their nose at the Super Nintendo for having shitty shmups and it's always not as good as the Genesis or Mega Drive, R-Type 3 doesn't seem to come up in this conversation all that much. Yeah, we got UN Squadron, we got Space Megaforts. No one brings up R-Type 3. The ironic part about it, though, is that R-Type 3 is exclusive to the Super Nintendo, from what I understand. I'm sure there's later ports and all that, but the original version is on the Super Nintendo. It runs well. I would still recommend overclocking it to remove the slowdown. I think it's more fun when you do that. But like I was saying, it's clearly much more in the vein of a console shmup. The levels are longer, there's more set pieces, the checkpoints are very kind. This is a game that was made for the console and it shows and it works. So if you're into like the Thunder Force series, I think you're really going to like R-Type 3 because it's really up that alley. They even include like different ship type with the Shadow Ball, I think it's called, and then the third one, I can't remember the third one. I really enjoyed the Shadow Ball though because one of my favorite things to do in R-Type is to release your force ball out there 
and let it just shoot and you kind of fly underneath it and have it as an option basically. But with the default ship type in across basically all the games, this actually is not that powerful of a technique. It usually isn't that advantageous. It's better usually just to stick your force ball in the front and use the red wave beam, which is absolutely OP in a lot of the games. Uh, that's usually the way to go. But what's fun about the shadow ball ship type is it actually has a really beefy option mode. And so it's actually really fun to just have that fly around and shoot things and gives it a real distinctive feel. And you have different shop types with the power ups. Nice stuff. I really like it. And then, of course, you can charge your beam to like super ultra power and it can blow through stuff. It goes through walls, it one shots, bosses practically. So our type three, I think the level design works really well. I like the soundtrack. I think the visuals, the 16 bit visuals are excellent. I think it's oddly not brought up in the console shmup conversation all that much. I'm not exactly sure why, but I had a ton of fun with it. I could see myself absolutely one C seeing this as well. So ironically, as weird as it sounds, I am actually a big fan of the Super Nintendo R-Type games, both Super and R-Type 3. You just need to overclock them. And once you get that rolling, it's they're a lot of fun. And then up next, we have R-Type 2. This one is, again, very interesting to rank because I could easily see R-Type 2 having a case for being number one because in my mind, R-Type 2 is the R-Type. If you go to bed at night and you dream of R-Type, R-Type 2 will be playing in your mind. It is the quintessential entry into the series. It's like Mario Bros. 3 of R-Type games. It's R-Type 1, but better in every way. The graphics are better. The level design is better. The power-up system is better. The weapons are better. The boss fights are better. And it's got that real distinctive feel. It is everything that is R-Type. It is the blueprint for the series, in my opinion. If there's like a scale of R-Typeness, R-Type 2 is like 11 out of 10, R-Type 1 is 10 out of 10, and then from there you get the variation. One of the strongest sequels I have seen across the genre. It just does everything well. It's a ton of fun. It is brutal as shit too, but in a fun way. The difference between R-Type 2 and R-Type Final 2 is that the difficulty of R-Type 2, while much higher, is not frustrating in the same way because the game gives you the tools, it's setting you up, it's cluing you in, the level design is all there, you're not ramming into things, things aren't flying out of the background, you're not wondering where the hitboxes are, it looks gorgeous. I don't really have a lot of criticism for it, honestly, other than if they removed the checkpoints. That would have been the money maker. If after our type one, Iron sat down and thought, you know what, checkpoints, <laughs> who needs that bullshit, right? Get rid of them. They never did though. The checkpoints are there. And I honestly think if Irim changed the checkpoints in R Type 2, we'd never see him again. Everyone would be like, Whoa! Checkpoints. R Type 2 did it right. This is my big criticism of 2. If they had changed that checkpoint, the dominoes would have stopped there. But because R Type 2 did it, now they all have to have checkpoints. You know, so that's what I brought up in that artistic laundering video where I think it's a big shame where you just sort of carry on past game design without ever questioning it and it's just tradition now that being said I think it could easily be in the number one slot if you're just looking for pure R typiness I think it would go in the number one slot but that's not what this list is about that brings us to the next ranking on the list which I think will be of course controversial but what we're here for baby R type Leo now, I know a lot of people are going to be annoyed with this entry on the list for two reasons. One, it's hella high on the list. It's the second highest. And two, because R-Type Leo is not an R-Type game, people will say. And so I did a little research, of course, just to cover my P's and Q's. But I think this is a very interesting phenomenon where people will not accept R-Type Leo into the series, even though it is officially released by Irem, even though Irem worked on it, even though it is officially branded, it is as bona fide an entry into the R-Type series as you can be. But the reason why is because the gameplay mechanics are changed. So no longer is the force ball in front of you. Now it's this roaming homing attack, which is awesome. And then you got the side pods. They're still hanging in there. The weapon styles are different. The level design is different. It has a much more dynamic feel to it. 
I Whoa. love this game. I really like R-Type Leo a lot. And if it was just going from my personal preferences, it'd be my favorite. It'd be top of the list. But the reason why I don't put it at the top of the list is because I know it's on the scale of our typiness It's like a three. It does have elements of our type, though. That's the thing about it that kind of annoys me is because people focus in on the things that they change, but they kind of forget the things that they keep the same. For one, goddamn checkpoints are back. Another is that you have those sort of side pods that block things. That is very our type. No other shmup does that, and you still use that throughout the game where you start blocking things with the side pods. And kind of the way you release your force ball, yes, it's no longer this thing you can do all this crazy stuff with and have it behind you, in front of you, but that attack of firing your force ball at things is in our type and it's a very our type thing to do. It's just now it's homing. So it is interesting how just a few variations in the level design, in the ball, in the way weapons work, that is enough to disqualify it from being an R type game. But in my opinion, is R type Leo really that different from the rest of the series in comparison to like SDOJ from Dodonpachi? Those games are very different from one another, but no one ever says, well, SDOJ is not a real Dodonpachi game. In my opinion, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So if you're gonna accept R type Final 2, which is made by a completely different studio as an R type game, you can't throw Leo out. Leo was worked on by Irem. It's approved, it's branded, it's in there. I know what people are gonna say, R-Type Tactics. That is literally a different genre of game. Whereas R-Type Leo, you're actually just changing a few game mechanics. You're not changing the genre. It's just literally a few changes to the way the shots work. So I, I do think it's just funny how R-Type fans, because the series is so by the numbers every single time, even the slightest variation in the design, like, ah! it's not our type anymore. So that's my little spiel on our type, Leo. I think it absolutely deserves to be counted. And the whole argument that, oh, it, well, it started off as a different game, so therefore it's not our type. Devil May Cry started off as Resident Evil, and then as they're going through, they change the mechanics and like, wait a minute, now it's rip. Devil May Cry. You can do that with games. It happens all the time. Games that begin with one project. Mario Kart. Mario Kart wasn't Mario Kart in the beginning. Super Smash Bros. wasn't Super Smash Bros. in the beginning. It's a completely different thing. But as they go through, as they develop, as they add ideas in the development, you can make one game into another. You can change a game that was once supposed to be a different shmup into an R-Type. It's absolutely possible. You can do that with Gradius. You can do that with anything in the development as long as you keep those elements in place. And I think Irem did that. So our type Leo, my favorite our type, but not the number one on the list. The number one on the list, it's the last one left, so no surprise, our type Delta. Now this is gonna be interesting because I think people assumed that I would dislike Delta because I dislike our type final two. But the reason for the difference isn't because they're in 3D or something like that. The reason for it is because our type final two has poor game design and our type Delta as excellent game design. So the first thing that R-Type Delta does that is brilliant, that carried on, that I think was a great change, that was a significant change, is speed up is now adjustable. It is no longer a power item. Thank whoever came up with that idea because having speed ups be an item, I think that was an annoying archaic design element that I'm happy to see go. Too bad checkpoints were taken out, but checkpoints are here to stay. So. That was a big shift. I think the graphics in Delta. Now, I'm a big fan of PS1 graphics. I love razor sharp PS1 graphics. They, they, they're my jam. So I love the graphical presentation of the game. The gameplay is really fun. And I think the reason why Delta is so beloved among our type fans and why so many people rank it so high and why I rank it so high is because it is epic. It is a journey. It is a quest and it, is innovative it's doing new ideas now the weapon system isn't all that different even though the speed ups is a big deal but the part about it that is innovative is the level design this is a huge departure in level design from our type 2 and all the other r type games final 2 tries to do its own thing but i think delta does it right it does this more epic big scale level design you've got all kinds of different obstacles you 
almost feels a little treasure to me at times. As I'm playing through, I'm like, mm, did a treasure dev sneak in here and start coding, start doing these levels? Because it feels like the closest thing to a treasure R-type game you're going to come across. And it's fulfilling what I think is R-type's ultimate destiny. Because like I said in the beginning of the video, I think R-type's DNA, even though it begins in the arcade, definitely trends more towards console style shmupping. And so Delta realizes that and says, okay, let, let's do this. And it does it well on the PS1. I think it's just a great balancing point between the classic R-type style, but also pushing it in a little bit of a new direction, but not so much that it gets funky like R-type Final 1. It's still well grounded, it still works, it's still comfortable. R-Type fans can really connect with it and it's a natural evolution. I think it is the apex of the series and I think most people tend to agree as well. It is interesting we don't see it come up more but I think maybe this video might help it out. So to end this video why don't I give my little recommendation of the order to play them to get into this series. So to begin with you probably want to start with R-Type 1. Even though R-Type 1 is a little funky and archaic it's still an excellent way to get into the series and teaches you basically all you need to know basics wise. So go with R-Type 1. And then I would say go with Super R-Type without slowdown. And then from there, go to R-Type 3. And then from R-Type 3, I would say go to R-Type Leo. Get funky with it, get fresh, try something new. And after that, if you're feeling extra weird, go to R-Type Final 1 and then end with Delta. I think you need to end with Delta though. You need to go through, play them all, Get your feel for them and then bring it all into Delta as the final chapter. So I hope you've all enjoyed this. This has been an epic undertaking. Hopefully my spicy hit takes haven't burned too many people in the comments section. But it's been a lot of fun. So like, subscribe, tell all your friends, send this to them in your angry posts or whatever you need to do. Adios everyone. So thank you to the $5 patrons, Anthony A, Anthony Iodice, Aaron Solis, Asa Davis, Ben, Orgy22, Brian Schieber, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Cook Some Soup, Corey Mark, Des Audio, Darkwing, Darren Griffin, Disco Stas Leia, DJ420, Praise It, Eric H, FCK, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Haosu, Kiwi, JLab, JBRPG, Jim Nockham, John Kelly, Jolts, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Kikoman589, Larage, Malaise, Mark Toms, Matthew Derekis, Maz, Megadeth859, Minong, Michaelin, Michael Stum, Mitch LY, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Neon Dagger Games, Ukulu Googles, Phil Mason, Rado Cat, Raul, Real Skeen, Riff Mason, Rolf, 015, Scanline City, Seven Overdose, Shane Sinsensky, Schmuck Junkie, Space Votuas, Stadium Arts, Steve Fiction, Super Snip, The Boot Rex, The Real Ikuzo, The Dirty Screech, The N1, The Old Bensta, TRM, Zugumo, Twilight EX, X20 Spec, and Yutakaya. Thanks for watching.